Luckily, Unity is quite accessible, certainly for people with experience from 3D modeling software. While the professional version of Unity is recommended for architectural visualization, you can use the free version of Unity for this course. We use mainly SketchUp, Archicad, and Cinema 4D. You can follow along in the 3D modeling software of your choice. Access to Photoshop or GIMP is recommended as well. The course is split into eight sections. The first section discusses the import of architectural models in Unity. We illustrate this with two different modeling applications. We start with Trimble SketchUp, which is an efficient and fun modeling software and is used widely by architects and designers. We also illustrate Graphisoft Archicad, which is a building information modeling software for architectural design and construction documentation. The workflow is more elaborate, but is still straightforward when combined with Maxon Cinema 4D. For other software systems, such as Revit, Rhino, AutoCAD, similar workflows can be followed. To ensure optimal performance, we will discuss a few techniques you can apply such as culling, splitting models, and refining import settings. The following sections will each show you a new series of techniques to be applied for the creation of a walkthrough. In section 2, we learn how we can walk around in your scene and how you can apply animated characters to it. Third section, on shaders and textures, will describe how you can set up materials to make the model look good using different techniques. Fourth section, will discuss lighting and shadowing. We will set up a daylight scene and apply both real-time and static pre-rendered lighting and shadows using the integrated Beast Light Mapper. In section 5, we talk about animation. We use the integrated keyframe animation system from Unity. The following two sections will introduce you to scripting. While you can do quite a lot with the existing tools and pre-packaged scripts, it is very important to have a basic knowledge of scripting to define your own interactive projects. Luckily, the scripting system in Unity is well integrated. Some basic background experience with scripting will be really beneficial. Finally, we will discuss how we can publish our walkthrough into some of the platforms supported by Unity. In this first video, we got an overview of the different activities we will perform throughout this video course. Our next videos will introduce you to the workflow of using Unity in combination with architectural modeling software. In this video, we will explain how we can transfer a SketchUp model into Unity. At the end of this lesson, we have the model loaded inside the Unity scene viewport. Since Unity cannot directly import SketchUp files, we have to convert the model to a more suitable format. This depends on the version of SketchUp you have available. We created a typical SketchUp model with faces, some groups and components, and materials applied to the geometry. From the file menu, we can directly export a 3D model into different formats. If you have SketchUp Pro, you can export as FBX. It can be used directly with Unity and is the preferred option. Set the units to meters, so the model can be imported at the correct scale. We save the model directly into the Assets folder, preferably in a subfolder such as Models. When you switch back to Unity, the model is automatically imported. It can now be dragged onto the Hierarchy tab or directly into the Scene window. Unity reaches SketchUp object names and hierarchy, provided you have modeled using groups and components. To ensure the model is loaded at the correct scale, insert the cube game object. By default, the cube game object is 1 by 1 by 1 meter, so we see that the SketchUp model is at a different scale. Correct this by selecting the SketchUp model in the Project tab and set a scale factor to 1 and press Apply. In case you don't have the Pro version of SketchUp, it still is possible to use the free Make version, which supports the Collada format. We will use the default options, but we see that we have no setting for scale or units. When you drag the model into the scene, you will need to notice that the scaling is not correct. In this case, we will use a scaling factor 0, 0, 2, 5, 4. Now we see that the two models are exactly on the same scale. With any addition of SketchUp, there are two frequent problems. First, ensure that all materials that have been generated by Unity 
have a correct texture applied. And you can switch the main color of the default material. In this video, we will explain how we can transfer an ArchiCAD model into Unity. If you are not a user of ArchiCAD, you may skip this video in the next one. However, when using Revit or Vectorworks, the workflow is very similar. Since Unity cannot read ArchiCAD files, and ArchiCAD has no direct support for FBX or Colada, we prefer to use other software to make the conversion. We use Cinema 4D and the Exchange add-on for ArchiCAD to add support for exporting a C4D file directly from ArchiCAD. While ArchiCAD is able to export OBG, 3DS and Google Earth files, they don't lead to the best results when used directly in Unity. It is a solution, however, when going from ArchiCAD to other 3D software, such as 3DS Max or Blender. In ArchiCAD, we created a model of a regular single-family house, which we want to prepare for an interactive walkthrough. From the ArchiCAD 3D window, choose a suitable view, which only displays the objects we want to have included in the export. From the Design Extras menu, we can set the Cinema 4D export settings first. For the most flexible output, choose the By Class option and leave the geometry scaling factor to 1. Save the file in the Cinema 4D format from within the 3D window. Ensure the model is saved in the Unity Project Assets folder. When you switch to Unity, it will convert the model from the save 4 d format to an FBX file in the background, provided you have Cinema 4D installed on your computer. So while we did not open Cinema 4D ourselves, Unity did this for us in the background. When you drag the ArchiCAD model in the scene and place a default cube next to it, we see that the default scale of 0.01 is suitable for this particular conversion. There usually are no backface problems with ArchiCAD. Materials are automatically retrieved and a model hierarchy from the export is respected. We see separate groups for walls, windows, roofs and slabs and other building elements. Each ArchiCAD object becomes a separate group, which contains the different polygonal meshes. Are we there yet? Not quite. We just exported the Cinema 4D file directly from ArchiCAD into a Unity project. In this video, we explained how we could convert an ArchiCAD model into Cinema 4D using the Exchange add-on, and even load it automatically in Unity. But we need more control, and we'll continue in the next video with the actual link between Cinema 4D and Unity. In this video, we will continue the explanation on how to transfer an ArchiCAD model into Unity. In the previous video, we already converted our ArchiCAD model into Cinema 4D format. However, there were no questions asked and everything was converted in the background. We cannot make changes directly in Unity, but we can edit the Cinema 4D file. Sometimes models don't come in correctly or need more editing. We had occasional mapping errors where texture ran messed up, scaled wrongly for certain parts of the model. We can also not define animations from within ArchiCAD. So if you want to include them, it should be done inside Cinema 4D. However, this would lead us too far in this video, so we focus on the texture mapping. We might occasionally have incorrect texture mapping applied to some objects, which can be corrected inside Cinema 4D. Double click on the model inside Unity to open Cinema 4D with this project. Most mapping problems can be solved by applying cubic rather than default UVW mapping. Usually, you would use the length and tiles parameter inside Cinema 4D texture tag to adjust the scaling for this object. But as we experienced, this modification is not retained in the conversion to Unity. So we need to use another method. Switch to the texture editing mode and activate the enable axis option. Now we can scale the gizmo, the cubic gizmo, to the 33 centimeters in all directions. This modification does not adjust the length and tiles parameter and will be retained when going to back to Unity. Save the Cinema 4D model and switch back to Unity. 
After a short while, the model in Unity is updated with the new texture coordinates. In the last two videos, we explained how we could convert an ArchiCAD model into Unity by using Cinema 4D and the Exchange add-on as an intermediate conversion tool. The same workflow can be established with Factorworks and Cinema 4D, or, if you prefer, Autodesk software, where you can combine AutoCAD or Revit with 3ds Max. In the next video, we will review the model update process, as this is an essential aspect of our visualization workflow with Unity. Now we know how to transfer models from two different applications, it is important to understand how changes in the model can be integrated back into the Unity project. While you might assume that all your work is lost if you need to update the model and re-import it, Unity provides a flexible workflow. All assets can be refreshed and updated in the project at all times. Since each model in the Assets folder stores its importer settings, we can create a new version of the geometry to be loaded again, still retain our adjustments inside Unity. When you export an updated version of your model, you have to override the previous version of the file using the same name and same export settings. Depending on the software you use, you might have to note down these settings when they are not retained. Let's see how this applies to a SketchUp model. Make a small change. And go back to the export dialog. In the options of the X export in SketchUp, you need to ensure that we use the same model units and other settings as last time. Be sure to override place the model already exported in the Assets folder of Unity using the same file name. The moment you switch back to Unity, it detects that the model source has changed and updates the instance in the project. Depending on the size of the model, this might take seconds or even minutes. In the case of ArchiCAD and Cinema 4D, it is also possible to add geometry or even record animation in Cinema 4D, which is important alongside the geometry. However, when the ArchiCAD model changes and is merged into the Cinema 4D file to update its geometry, we lose specific changes to the ArchiCAD geometry that occurred inside Cinema 4D. We only retain objects outside of the hierarchy but also material adjustments, render settings, and other animations. Let's illustrate this with a small change in the ArchiCAD model. Copy one of the windows to the side of the building, and save back again the 3D model. Since this is a change, we will save it outside of the regular assets folder, the second version of our model. Then we go back to Open Cinema 4D. Then now we can open our last model. This is a model that is linked in Unity. But it is not updated with the previous changes. You might have made some modifications here. Instead of simply opening a model, we will merge the updated version of the geometry and load it into the current Cinema 4D project. If we look back to the site, we see that the additional window is there. Now we can save this model and go back to Unity. I see that this version of the model will be reflected in Unity with the new windows. The model itself is at exactly the same position change in the scene is simply the update of the geometry. To conclude, Unity is a system with a very well thought out workflow. This was illustrated in this video by showing how models can be reloaded when they are modified. Applied transformations, materials and import settings are retained in Unity, even after changes to the model file. In the next video, we will go over some options we have to improve the performance of the project. In this video, proving performance, we will explain how we can improve our model by optimizing its settings and by reorganizing our scene a bit. Architectural models tend to be quite large and can slow down real-time projects, certainly on mobile clients. While Unity provides several optimizations behind the scenes, we can improve performance ourselves as well. We will look at prefabs and culling. First, toggle the Stats button in the Game window to display an approximate frame count and a summary of the used geometry. If you export the whole project as a single model, it becomes very static. In interactive scenes, we want to have more control 
and need to adjust individual objects separately. Even though our models contain a usable hierarchy, it is more efficient to split them up. The next step, we create a separate model for objects that are to be repeated in the scene, such as a chair. We load a furniture object from SketchUp as a single file and export it as an FBX file into the Unity Assets folder. The chair model automatically loads in Unity. And now we can drag it into an empty scene. We can easily place copies by pressing Ctrl or Command D with the object selected. Since loaded models are treated as prefabs, they all stay connected to the source object. Although this does not actually speed up rendering, it helps in project management and is highly recommended. Unity performs so-called culling on different levels. Culling is when the Unity graphics system skips objects, geometry, that is not visible. We already saw culling in action when Unity hides the backside faces of geometry. With dynamic culling, Unity also hides objects which fall outside our camera view. This is noticeable in the stats window. Activate play mode and move the camera left or right. So we can see the amounts of chairs that can be seen. When you set the static attribute for objects, you indicate that they will not move and can be optimized by the graphics system. This is called static culling. However, it is only supported in the pro version of Unity. In the free version, this has no direct performance impact. However, we will return to this toggle later on, so that this is a good habit to indicate which objects are standing still in our project. To facilitate culling, it helps to split very large objects or scenes in smaller chunks, so they can be toggled on and off when they disappear from the camera view for us. If only the tiniest part of an object is visible for the camera, it cannot be culled. The more geometry we load, the more effort it takes. So remove every detail from the model that is not contributing to the real-time project. This is especially important for architectural models that tend to include excessive geometry for every part of the building. While we are not able at this point to get into more detail about other possible performance improvements, we have shown at least the basic techniques to manage a project for better performance. Use prefabs and try to limit the amount of geometry at all costs. This ends our first section on importing architectural models in Unity. Our next section will focus on walking around in our project.